I wanted to give some brief thoughts on the eight um, on the NWA's debut on the CW app. There are a couple episodes into this new season so far, and I wanted to give some thoughts. I thought I thought both episodes were pretty good. I thought the first one was much better than the second. I think the production value is very good. The venue that they used was ex- excellent. And I said this about last season, but I'm saying it about this one too. This is their best work since the early days of NWA. And that's what people always talk about when they talk NWA. First season, it was gold, it was magic, but it wasn't a model that they were able to sustain. They had to update with the times, especially because the roster changed so much. And they've, you know, they've had to update things to a more modern style of wrestling, but I enjoyed the episodes. You know, I enjoy their style of wrestling, which some people might find boring, but I say this with TNA, like I would rather watch Eddie Edwards versus Frankie Kazarian than Speedball Mike Bailey versus Zachary Wentz. You know, I'm just more into guys who just can work a match rather than flipping around and doing all this and this and hitting super finishers and kicking out of everything. And this is awesome, champ. Like I I, I like a, a slower paced match of guys who can work. So the NWA's always worked for me. I've, I've for the most part I've enjoyed watching it. Um, you know the seasons where Velvet Sky was there, I, I just couldn't. I've said that she was to commentary what Tyrus was to the world title, but they got away from her. I thought Tim Storm on commentary also was very dry and boring. So th- the commentary's improved. Um, but but again, I did enjoy both the episodes. Venue looked great again. Um, backstage segments they're not as bad as TNA's, but they still don't look great i don't really enjoy the interviews i enjoy watching may valentine i pretty much the entire time i don't typically enjoy the interviews very much but um it was it was was a good little debut i'm repeating myself here when i say this but you know they moved to the cw app i already had the app i watched cw programming i have for years so i had the app already when I logged on the CW app, it immediately promoted NWA Power. It's a new episode of NWA Power. And that's the difference between getting involved with an app and being on YouTube. Because YouTube, you're competing against everybody. Every single content creator, the millions that upload every day. You're competing against all that. You don't get promoted. And as someone who gets paid by YouTube, they do not pay you your worth. I promise you. The app, the actual... Ads on the CW app are real freaking commercial. So if they're getting paid ad revenue, I assure you it's more than they were getting from YouTube. Now, I've said this before as well. For whatever reason, it doesn't bother me personally, but for whatever reason, people do not like to watch long content on YouTube as far as sitting and watching a video. I mean, a a show, a TV show. YouTube tried YouTube Red at one point with their own original programming and it completely bombed. It tanked. Uh, the only thing that lasted was Cobra Kai, and that got picked up by Netflix. Everything else completely tanked because people don't like watching TV on YouTube. Because, yeah, we do whatever on our phones. But when you're sitting with your Roku or your Fire Stick and you're in bed, it is easier to navigate the CW app than it is YouTube when you're trying to find what you want to watch. It is much easier. It's a much better viewing experience, which is overall why the numbers probably trend more towards people enjoying these apps. Now, using on my phone, the issue I had is that you can't minimize the CW app. You're either watching it or you're not to where you can you know, minimize YouTube. And if you minimize it, I mean, excuse me, if you get out of the CW app during an ad, then you're going to watch the ads again and you can't fast forward to the ads. So the viewer experience on your phone is not, not that friendly. But if I was watching on my television, I think it would be a friendlier experience than YouTube. So um, I think the CW app is a step in the right direction. But I, I promise you people that that are saying they were better off on YouTube, I promise you they weren't. I, I just, they weren't. I promise. I'm going to get into these like results really, really quick. Um, I'm not like reviewing the show, but I just want to kind of discuss the results. The very first... Well, first of all, I want to say this venue was excellent. It was in a bar. It was kind of reminiscent of Lucha Underground where people used to come down the stairs through the crowd. That's kind of how this was, and it looked excellent. But in the first match, 
they had blunt force trauma defending their tag team championships against Tim Storm and, and Jack Stane. I thought, so these episodes were very championship heavy, the first couple, especially this first one, which is cool. I think that's a good idea when you're kicking off a new season on a new platform. But I would have changed the titles here. Blunt Force, you know, NWA likes to, their champions to be champion for a long time. This has run its course. Blunt Force Trauma managed by Aaron Stevens. It has run its course. And this would have been a great opportunity to get the belts off them. And it, it, it Jax Dane and Tim Storm's what Tim Storm winning them would have gotten over big time. So I was kind of disappointed in that because it's just an act. It's a gimmick that is, you know, they, they win by cheating. They get disqualified. It's just kind of the same shit, same shit. And it's been going on for a very long time. And it was time for something fresh. And they decided not to go that direction. Kenzie Page defended her title against Tiffany Nieves, who's who's very talented as well. But Kenzie Page, they, they got a they got a little star in her. NWA, I say this loosely, but they do a pretty good job of building stars. And the reason I say I say that loosely is because it's a smaller company. It doesn't have as many eyes. But when you're all things relative, they do a better job, I think, than most companies of of elevating people to the top. And uh, they got something with Kenzie Page when she first joined the company. You know, if I'm being honest, she was overweight, and she obviously recognized that because she worked very hard on her body. She's a much better wrestler now for it. She's much more fluid in the ring. And they got something with her. I'm entertained with Kenzie Page. I wish that, and, and her was pretty empowered, her team. Um, I wish that she would get away from this Kenzie Cutter. I hate cutters as finishers. I hate cutters in general. But I think if she wants to go to the next level, I think she needs a more um, unique and original finisher than the cutter. And and frankly, a lot of the women can't take the cutter properly, and, and it looks bad. You know, when she took on Ruthie J at a, I think I saw win. I think is when she wrestled her, or might have been an episode of Power. Like that, she took the cutter like shit, but it was the finish because NWA does pr- protect uh, protect their finishers very well. But they got something with Kenzie Page. She's she's one of the uh, things you want to watch on this show. And one one match I would really recommend to people was EC3 defending his title against Matt Cardona in the Ultimate Match of Death, uh, ten pounds of gold weapons. So Matt Cardona came to the ring. He's got a great entrance team. It's upbeat. It's got energy. The people were into it. He's walking through the crowd. And then EC3 comes out. And the commentators want to, they said, oh, you know, the crowd is split. They weren't. Even though EC3 is over and he's the overman, man. Um, this was a bad look because people wanted Cardona to win. And um, I say this about Josh Alexander and TNA is that he has a, Pretty shitty theme song, in my opinion. It has no energy, no juice to it whatsoever. So the people were just, hey, you know, you you don't get that pop when he comes out. But Cardona, you got the big pop. And EC3's music is not bad, but it's also very calm and it's majestic. And the crowd just by nature could not cheer for him the way they did for Matt Cardona. But this was a legit death match it was a good death match and maybe there's no such thing it was just (laughs) for what it was it was really well done and entertaining i thought it was gonna be some bullshit no dq street fight type of match but they really did some shit they broke the glass the uh the light tubings it was an excellent match they taught a great story i mean told a great story uh usually i'm not into hardcore matches at all but just because of the story it was really worth watching. So I thought this new this first episode was really good. However, I would have um, taken the titles off Blunt Force Trauma and get something new. I think that would have been a great way to start the episode. I don't think you can have episode number one, titles on the line, and then no titles change. The next episode, oh, they did, they did a, a video package with Mims, which was fucking excellent. That was the best video package they've ever done. The next episode was not as good. Uh, I still enjoyed it, but it, it just wasn't as good as the first one. Uh, cause the first couple matches, the first match wasn't bad, but it was Knox and Murdoch versus the Southern six. I don't really like any of them. 
I think Kerry Morton's really talented, but the, the rest of the guys don't really do it for me. So I was a little bored with this, and I thought it was a bad opener, especially because it ended in a no contest. The one that's been having getting some chatter online was the world television title unification match, the men's champion Mims against the women's champion Maxi Impaler. She's the binary nightmare or whatever they call her, but at the end of the day, she's a chick. And if you're not familiar with Maxi Impaler, she is comparable to Jessica Havoc. And they had a pretty competitive match. But the finish was shocking because Maxi Impaler cleanly beat Mims with a powerbomb in the middle of the ring. I thought Mims was going to count out, I mean, kick out. And um, no, they unified the freaking titles with the women's title, the women's champion winning. So does that mean the men's title is gone? Because that is the one mid-card title that means something in wrestling, in my opinion. Because you defend it seven times and then you can cash it in for a world title shot. I think it's a great concept. But I'm trying not to shit on it too much because I'm I'm waiting creatively to see what happens. Billy Corgan's a creative dude. I am waiting to see where, where it goes. Are they going to bring the title back? Because Mims said he was going to return to the women's title to the women's division. But I thought it was weird because Mims is one of the dudes that, that he's they're elevating. They're doing something with. He's good. He can talk. Very talented. And it just seemed like at hard times, EC3 versus Mims made a lot of sense. Um, well, maybe not so much because I think that was his fourth title defense. He would have needed to get three more in. But it seemed like going that direction of him challenging EC3 for the title at some point is the way w- what you want to do to elevate Mims even further. And he takes the clean loss here. I thought they cut him off at the knees. I didn't understand it. But again, I'm I'm waiting creatively to see what happens. But right now on social media, the company looks horrible for this. There's people who did, did not like this. And of course, the people who don't watch the product liked it even less. <laughs> you know you know how that goes. But I just thought that was really, really ch- strange. Uh, and then the Immortals, Kratos and Odinson, um, or Odinson took on the Slime Balls. I like the Immortals. The Slime Balls need to go back whatever, to whatever bingo hall uh, they were found in. Because I think they stink. I have no interest in them or their gimmick. I think it's indie. Um, super indie. And I don't mean super indie like jump off the top rope doing flips. I just mean bingo hall. Uh, um, I mean just they have no business being on TV. They're annoying. So I, I don't... They won like a, a battle royal for this title shot. And I was just, you know, because they're the, um, I think the U.S. tag team champions, uh, the Immortals, if I'm right. Because, yeah, because they, they won a Christmas wish battle royal. And, I mean, they stink. I just, I can really do with about 100% less of them. And then the main event was Silas Mason uh, defending his title, his national heavyweight championship against Birchall. So Paul Birchall making his return to wrestling. He looks good. And the reason I really like this match was that, um, you know, we see it a lot of times in TNA, like they bring in these old wrestlers and put them in the main event and no one really wants to see it. But they told a, they told a good story here. And what I always appreciate about NWA is the video packages before the episodes. They kind of let you know why you should watch the episode rather than like TNA lets you know why you should have watched last week's episode. NWA does a good job of kind of like hyping you up for what their main event is. <clears throat> the only issue is that Paul Birchall did a backstage interview with May Young or May Young, May Valentine, and he said the, the same exact thing that the video package said. I mean, the same exact thing. And I thought that was a big time production snafu. I thought that came off really bad. Um, but you know, talking about doing it for his kids and all that, and. This match itself, I'm not like a huge Silas Mason guy. Like, I just don't really care for the Southern Sick. So I'm not a huge fan. But what I appreciated with this match, and I don't think any other company could could pull this off, was that the match, so Silas Mason was dominant, but not dominant to the point that Paul Burke, that, um, oh, let's call him virtual, that he looked like a joke. 
but you also didn't you also knew at no point Burchill was going to win the match. He didn't have that kind of momentum that you thought he was going to win. So it, the champion looked really good um winning the match, but Burchill actually looked pretty good in in defeat. It's it, it, it it's very difficult to 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 have a match where the champion can look so strong and dominant and the opponent not get squashed and look weak. He was like competitive, competitive enough, just enough to where it wasn't a squash, but you also knew he wasn't going to win. So I thought just the pacing of it was excellent. I don't know if he's going to continue to be on the show or not. This is the company that can get away with older wrestlers and it, and it fits, you know, like TNA brings them someone old. It's kind of like, eh. and even when AEW does it, sometimes it's like, eh. Just because of the way NWA does their programming, it works. So I thought they had a first good couple of episodes. I look forward to seeing uh, what they're going to do going forward. But I do think the CW app is a is a step in the right direction. Again, for all you people that say they're better off on YouTube, they're not. Um, and this is this probably opens doors to, you know, this is going to open doors for them. So uh, looking forward to the next um, episode.